Um, my first question. Yes. So uh, when I hear uh, Ruth Kinuthi, I just mm -hmm. think of Miss Kenya. You are Miss Kenya 2008 and you yeah. actually represented us uh, South Africa. Yes. Um, tell us, how was your year like? Um, that was, I was actually crowned 2007 November and I went on to 2008. And then I handed over the crown in 2009 by default. Um, anyway, it was a pretty tough year. Um, it was amazing. I mean, the exposure was amazing, getting to travel to different nations. I'd never been out of the country before. So even representing Kenya in Miss World, which is held in South Africa, was amazing. Um, I traveled to China as well, to Scotland. So it was pretty good. I mean, the glamorous aspect of it was amazing. The challenges behind the scenes, because at that time, Miss Kenya was not as well funded as it is now. So back then there were no many sponsors. So you can imagine the pressure of delivering. There's no funding, there's no support. But we made it through, so it was really good. So you talked about uh, from 2007 to 2009. Nine, yeah. why, was that, why was that period too long, like not like the other periods? Um, actually because, you see, 2008 was a bit um, of a hectic time. You remember that was the time there was uh, post-election violence from 2007. So it was a pretty turbulent time. Um, the franchise was able to put together a Miss Kenya event. So I held the crown throughout that year. And I actually traveled end of 2008 to for Miss World. Yes. So uh, since then, people have seen the beauty and the glamour of Ruth. Yeah. People have never known mm -hmm. who Ruth was before <laughs> being crowned. So yeah. who, who was Ruth before being crowned Miss Kenya? And mm -hmm. what are some of the habits you actually left behind? Oh, wow. Who was she? She was just your girl neck laid back. No, well, not laid back, but was very reserved. Um, I think that has changed. You know, some of the things I left behind is that I had to become more outgoing, more vocal. Um, I was a pretty diligent girl, focused, very much of a church girl, and I've pre held on to some of that um, because I take my faith very seriously. Um, and she, she, was, she was just your regular girl. I mean, I was like, going to campus, going to church, hanging out with my friends. So she was your average girl next door. So, uh, did you? How was it like? Uh, now you're Miss Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are things now you have to do, like you oh, have to, yeah. like have the, <laughs> the latest trends, yeah, yeah. do some stuff. What did you have actually? Uh -huh. What did you actually have to do so that you can show people you're Miss Kenya? So, I mean, breaking out from the girl next door to this glamorous person, because you see, the name Miss Kenya comes with an expectation. And it comes with a standard that has already been set by my predecessors. And, you know, you represent the country in whatever public event you go to. So you really have to step up. I had to get very glam. I was, I was just, I was a really plain girl. I always had my hair up in a bun. Never used to wear makeup. Very minimal jewelry. I was not exactly a trendy person. So I had to get really trendy. It helped to have designers, you know, to help me out. Um, you had to be in character, I call it getting into character because when you go to an event, I mean you pass by, make your hair, do your makeup, get a designer to dress you, get shoes, so it feels like a Cinderella. So you're actually dressing up for an event and then you can go home and become that girl next door. Yeah. Of course now we, we know you right now as one of the biggest trend, trendsetters in, mm -hmm. in Kenya. Now mm -hmm. from being the beauty industry, mm -hmm. uh, how has that been for you? How long have you been in the industry and mm -hmm. what actually inspired you to get into makeup? So um, I always wanted to model, that much I know. But I can't say I always wanted to be a makeup artist because back then there were no makeup artists or if there were they were not really heard of. So I feel for me being a makeup artist was a natural progression from the fashion industry because I was a model, I was, an, I was a model for a good seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all through, right after high school, all through campus um, and even after. And then I went into makeup because I was always an artistic person and you know, makeup is a way of self-expression. So it is an, it's an art, but still, um, when I finished campus, I started interning with uh, one of the biggest makeup artists right now, actually who is a trained center, that's Susie Wokabi. So I started interning with her right after I finished high, uh, campus. So I think that's how I got into it and I just started to love the makeup art. Yeah. 
Well, that seems to have paid a lot because um, you were last year, uh, you actually won Makeup Artist of the Year. Yeah. How was that for you, actually? <laughs> I feel very blessed. I really feel very blessed. And I, I can't really say I'm a veteran in the industry yet because I've been in the industry now four years. Yeah, there are people who've been here longer than I have. But um, I submitted my application for the Kenya Fashion Awards Makeup Artist of the Year. And I just did it because I was like, okay, they, they had written me an email and I'd seen it, I think, on social media. And they were saying, uh, we're going to have these awards, Kenya Fashion Awards. If you want to be nominated, send your application, send your portfolio. So I did that. And I, and I just, I thank God so much. And I give credit to the makeup lovers, to the fans, because they voted. I remember I, I was running promotions on Instagram, on Facebook, every week, I think for two months, telling people to vote Fashion Awards, and, and it was announced. They usually show the tally of the votes, votes. Now, we were four nominees, and I had over 50% of the votes. Yeah. Uh, to you, becoming Makeup Artist of the Year means mm -hmm. you actually have gone through challenges. What oh, yeah. are some of the struggles you've gone through? Oh wow, this, well, the industry is not easy. Well, it's growing so much now in leaps and bounds. It's, it's really growing. And right now there's so many entrants and makeup artists who want to be. I think it's because of the, of the trend we've set and they can actually look at me or look at the other makeup artists in the industry now and say, I want to be like that. But it wasn't always like that, even when I joined. So starting out in the creative industry um, is, is hard. It's hard. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of bootstrapping. There's a lot of, you just need to be as tenacious as possible. Because I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit. <laughs> I wanted to quit so many times. I did, but I had to remain tenacious. And you just, just focus on the bigger picture. Find things that inspire you. I used to find success stories that inspire me to keep going. We you know when you've had a tough client or you haven't had a job in a month, you know? So just, uh, my sister is, I think, not is, I think, she is my biggest fan and my biggest investor. I wouldn't have made it this far. So she always helps me with the business, pushes me to be better. And I think that's how I am here today.